purpose of this video is to make a comparison. We should all know that the Planet of the Apes movie was a symbolic movie about apes or the so-called Negro or Hebrew or blacks in general taking over the population, especially the so-called blacks of this captivity. They mock us. The short clip is no way to belittle or make fun of the situation at the border with the Haitians. This is clearly to show that the truth is stranger than fiction. And movies, unfortunately, are better examples of admitting real truths than the issues on propaganda media. Now, if anyone's ever read The Negro Rulers of Scotland and the British Isles, there's a certain section in the back of the book which talks about how the so-called blacks or blacks of nobility were in rulership. And the best example of this rulership or dominance over certain people is the movie Planet of the Apes. See, the directors, they know our history better than we know it ourselves. They have all our books and ancient texts. So when they tell the truth, they have to put it in art form for those who are meant to get it. Because some people look at movies as just entertainment. And for the others, the subliminal and superliminal messages. So a lot of times in movies, they're conveying two types of stories. We have the esoteric information, which is a small group of people with a specialized knowledge or interest. And then we have the exoteric, which is pretty much to the public or mass. So right here, we have a depiction of Negro rule or Negro rulership by Norman Jeanette, the vampire that hovers over North Carolina, Negro rule, the news and observer, September 27, 1898. Now one would have to ask, why would they have this depiction of the so-called black man if our history is just slavery and it starts at 1619? We must remember that the civilizations of old were all started by indigenous people of color, so-called black people. So we have to remember that the so-called blacks or indigenous or people of color aboriginals the people invented the first alphabet, the concept of the universe, government, king, queen, religion, medicine, and study of anatomy, hospitals, the skill of surgery, spectacles, the textile industry, universities, metaphysics, chemistry, military techniques, navigational instruments, propellers, sea vessels, diving equipment, aeronautics, computers, philosophy, and mathematical sciences, a marvelous accomplishment that led to development of the Western civilization. And we have to remember, there's no such thing as an ancient Caucasian city. Caucasians did not invent civilization. In all honesty, our ancestors taught them how to be civilized. Now we have to ask ourselves, why would they put this in the film? Who taught them how to talk? Before they could talk, they grunted and made all sorts of various sounds. But until they were civilized by the black nobility, they became humane or human. And then also, too, to take into consideration that through the admixture of the so-called blacks, rulership during that time intermixing with the Caucasian woman, which was the bad wench, of the medieval or dark ages. That's why they say tall, dark, and handsome, right? And right here we have the beastal state of the so-called Caucasian. Right here in the movie Planet, or beneath Planet Apes, we have the modern shape down Caucasian or so-called white person is civilized and can talk. Notice the blue eyes and, you know, if anyone's seen the movie Harry and the Hendersons, uh, Harry is uh, the antecedent of this modern so-called white person or Caucasian. The Caucasians are the ones that are up top. They know their history. They know the prophecies that were prophesied in the Bible, but they know their downfall. That's why it's in their best interest to offset the prophecies of the scriptures. That's why a lot of people are confused or don't know which is which, but they hide the history, but through art form, they tell you in plain sight. So now we're at etymaline.com and it says beastal, late 14th century belonging to a beast 
1400, having the qualities of a beast from old French beastal 13th century, relating to animals, beast like, stupid, foolish, brutal, and directly from Latin, um, bestialist, if I'm pronouncing it right, like a beast, sense of below the dignity of a human. In English, is from the 14th century, and in many cases does injustice to the beast. When the beast of the book of Revelation was meant, the adjectival from Beston, 1650s. You cannot make this stuff up. So right here we have the 14th century German tapestry of the Black Amours. So we have the wild man and Moors in the siege. And we see them fighting and defending off their castle. In the States, catalog entry, series of scenes left to right. Wild man attacking Moors in castle. Will command fighting with lion. We know the lion represents the lion of Judah. Dragon and unicorn, which means rhino and wild man carrying food to wild woman with two children seated at a foot of rocks, stylized trees, plants, rocks, stylized trees, plants, rocks, pinkish red background covered with roses and two shades of pinkish red. OK, this is real history. So to push the narrative of the slave in the uh, west coast of Africa. This is quiet as kept. They don't want this type of information to leak out or gain mainstream media attention because it goes against the narrative. So let's go back and look up some more definitions of beast or beastly resembling a beast showing lack of human sensibility. Synonyms, beastal, brute, brutish and brutal. OK, beastly, informal, very unpleasant. Synonyms, hellish, god awful. So in the Caucasian beastal state, we're the ones that taught them the laws and the oracles of the Most High. We're the ones that taught them about the scriptures. Uh, we call them the wild man. Or they was running around on all fours, butt naked in the woodlands. Okay. They had heavy hair. Hurticism, if I'm pronouncing that right. But these people had many diseases during the dark ages, a double connotation, meaning that blacks were in rulership during the medieval times. But these people had wild tendencies. They were barbarians. They grunted. They couldn't speak. No, it's not to say that all Caucasians came from that, but you have certain ones that came after the fall of the Imperial Roman Empire and served under the so-called blacks of nobility and so forth. But through the black plague, which was caused by the wild man's excessive body hair and body lice spread throughout Europe and killed a lot of our people and our bodies could not fight it. We didn't have any antibodies to fight it or combat it. So when you see the picture or the tapestry of the 1400s or 1300s of the uh, Moors defending the castle against the wild man, you know, now you know that's real history. That's real documentation. So we have the same actor in Selma, MLK, and Rising of the Planet of the Apes slash Negroes. The same actor archetype plays Jacob mocking MLK in Israel, quote unquote, Jacob. Now, who 
is Esau slash Edom. You know, this question right here raises a lot of eyebrows. We know we hear brothers on the street talking about the so-called white man or Caucasian. It's Esau. And then we have another section of the Hebrewic or Israelite community that says the Arab is Esau. Who really is Esau according to the scriptures? You know, we must remember that a lot of these movies, the Caucasians that are on top, the elite or the Caucasian Jew, they know their origins and they know their history. But with you know high value information, you don't give it away to the masses because what do they do with that type of information? But there's plenty of movies with symbolic or symbolisms, esoteric, that shows who they are and what they were in history. This notion that uh, Esau is the Arab and black or so-called black, no, I don't believe it. But let's go to the scriptures and then the Strong's Concordance and other clues to see who is Esau throughout history. So now we're at Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Now highlighted all over and of course a hairy garment. So we're going to look up the word garment in the Strong's Concordant. So let's see what it says for hairy in the Strong's Concordant. H8163 Sire, meaning kid, goat, devil, Sire, hairy, rough. Then we have H8181 Sire, hair, hairy, rough. Now I wanted to put a little emphasis on the word devil and of course hairy, but also goat or kid, because kid just means goat. Uh, in the old world, the so-called white man was considered the devil. I wonder why they would make those assertions or statements. Now we're going to jump off of the scriptures for a second and go to the book, A Hundred Amazing Facts About the Negro with Complete Proof by J.A. Rogers. And this is the section, Religion. And it reads, when the so-called whites or Caucasians came into power they shifted the colors, but as late as the 1500s, the Ethiopians still depicted their gods and heroes black and their devils and villains white. Father Fernandez, a Catholic missionary who worked amongst them at this time, says they paint the Hamishiach or Christ, the Blessed Virgin and other saints in black form and the devils and wicked man white. Thus Christ and his apostles are black and Judas White, Annas, Capus, uh, and Pilate, Hera, and the Jews are white, while Michael is black, and the devil white. Hmm. So now we're at the lexicon, Strong's Concordance, for H8163, Sire, and it states, adjective, hairy, masculine, noun, he goat, buck, a, as a sacrificial animal, B, Sire, may refer to a demon possessed goat like the swine of Gadara. Strong's definition, Sire, H8175, shaggy, like a dog's hair, right? Straight hair. As now, a he goat, by analogy, devil, goat, hairy, kid, rough. Sire. Not to get off too much of topic, but when we look at the so-called black man's hair, it's coarse. We describe it as wooly. But when we look at the Caucasian, we see that they have shaggy or matted hair or straight hair or that of a dog, right? And this is just for educational purposes. This is not making fun or anything of that sort. So we're at etymoline and the word is shaggy. Rough, coarse, unkept, 1590s. Shaggily, shagginess. Earlier it was shag from Old English. Hairy, the shaggy dog story as a type of joke is attested from 1944. So it's letting you know shaggy equates to hairy. 
Now we're at the Oxford's Dictionary, and it states, Shaggy, of hair or fur, long, thick, and unkept. The mountain goat has a long, shaggy coat. Similar, hairy, as we read previously, hirsute, bushy, thick, having long, thick, unkept hair or fur. A huge, shaggy English sheepdog. So now we're going to look up the word hirsute. And it says, hairy, 1620s, from Latin, hirsutus, rough, shaggy, bristly, figuratively rude, unpolished, related to hirtus, shaggy, and possibly to horrier, if I'm pronouncing it right, to bristle with fear. What is a hirsute person? Someone who is hirsute is hairy. Synonyms, hairy, bearded, shaggy, as we read previously, unshaven, or over excessive body hair, very long. So now we're going to read Genesis chapter 27, verse 11. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Genesis 27 and 23. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. So we know that hairy in the Strong's Concordant means goat, devil, sire, hairy, and rough. That of a, a he goat or a buck or that of a dog. So it's letting us know that Esau had texture of a hair of a goat, dog, sheep dog, straight hair per se. So right here we have Uncle Samael, I want you. As we can see, we have the he goat. Same thing with the shaggy bush underneath. And of course, America let Edom reign. And we're going to look at a couple more illustrations of the so-called white man or Caucasian or Esau, Edom. And they know what the prophecy says. So in 2nd Etrus, chapter 6, verse 9, Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob or Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So right here we have a so-called white man, Caucasian. Um, he has very hirsute, over excessive body hair. As you can see, hairy arms, hairy chest, legs, and so forth. So now we're back at the word shaggy. And we know that shaggy means, or it's very similar to hairy, hirsute, bushy, and thick. Having long, thick, unkept hair or fur. A huge, shaggy, English sheepdog. Now there's an old movie called Shaggy D.A. Now the directors, they know their history. High level Caucasians or whatnot. And they put it in art form subliminally because most people do not know or they try to keep their origins a secret or mystery or turn into a mythos. Fellow citizens, for many years now... You're getting a little gray, Dad. Fellow citizens... <gasps> no! So now we're going to pick back up at Genesis chapter 25, verse 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, which is deer, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Verse 32, And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? Verse 34, Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. 
So now we're going to go to Genesis chapter 27, verse 11. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man or a hirsute man, and I am a smooth man. And Rebekah took goodly remnants of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. Verse 16, and she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. So now we're at the strong concordance of the word Sair. And Sair or Mount Seir equals hairy or shaggy. I repeat, hairy or shaggy. Proper masculine noun, a patriarch of the Horites, the inhabitants of Edom before the descendants of Esau, the Edomite. So right now we're at the Strong's definition, Sair, formed like H8163, rough Seir, a mountain of Idumia, which is Greek, or Edom, and its aboriginal occupants, also one in Palestine. But we know aboriginal always denotes the people of color, copper colored peoples. So we have to remember that the Caucasian or so-called white man is not indigenous and he's not aboriginal to any land mass. So the scriptures is letting us know that Esau or Edom is not indigenous to any land mass. He sold his birthright. Even Mount Seir, his first occupants were aboriginal, the Horites, which were people of color. So now we're at the word devil, strong concordance number H8163. Kid, goat, devil, Sair, hairy, and rough. As we can see the wild man on the right hand side of the illustration. Now I'm going to jump ahead and read Revelations chapter 20. And it says, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven and having the key of the bottomless pit, which is the Russian steppe or the Caucasus Mountains, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent of old, who is the devil and a Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Now we know devil is associated with kid goats, Sair, Harry, and so forth. So her shoot or the wild man. And we also know that the synagogue of Satan, we know that the most high is controlled of everything on the left and right hand side. So the people on the left are just pawns in the game for Satan. But through television, through miseducation, a lot of people will not realize or see that it's right there in the scriptures. If we look and do a little research and avoid a lot of false doctrines. So this will be the end of part one and uh, there'll be a part two. But peace and shalom.